welcome everyone to Coffee with the Codex. Uh, my name is Dot Porter and I'm a curator here in the Kislak Center for Special Collections, Rare Books and Manuscripts in the University of Pennsylvania Libraries. And every week for Coffee with the Codex, I take a book off our shelves and we do a little bit of a show and tell. And if this is your first Coffee with the Codex, welcome. Um, if you have questions as we go, you can drop them in the chat. Uh, I will actually drop something in the chat right now because if you want to follow along with our digital copy, um, there is a link or there's not a link. Hold on. Um, here we go. So that first one is the link to the record and then our upcoming um, upcoming events. Uh, I'm giving a lecture this Friday. If you want to attend that, you can join our um, list if you want. There are all the links for today. Uh, so today we are looking at a really interesting little manuscript um, that is shelf mark MS Codex 1263. And it is a confession, a confessional. Um, which is a genre of text that I did not know a whole lot about until I started um, looking into it. Um, and we're going to take a we're going to take a close look at the manuscript and at some of the text um, that is that is in here. So as I think I interrupted myself as we go, if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. My colleague Amy Hutchins here is our manuscripts cataloger, and she will also. Um, she can also answer questions as we go. Uh, it's a pretty simple um, looking manuscript, but there's a lot uh, going on here. So we can go ahead and get started with this. Um, it is from Italy, maybe Tuscany, uh, written in sort of the first half of the 15th century. So between 1400 and 1450. Um, and it, as I said, it's of this genre called a confessional. And the, the type of book that it is, is in this, so this is in the West and the Catholic Church. And there was sort of starting in the 13th century, the expectation that people would go to a priest and say a sort of regular confession. This is, I confess my sins to you and to God, and then you tell me what I need to do to make it right. Um, and this particular confessional is divided into two sections. The first section is for the person making the confession. Um, and then the second half is for the priest. Um, although the, the two sections are actually written in the same hand. Uh, so here is where this is the end of the first section and the start of the second section. And we'll, we'll look at this more in detail. Um, but it is in the same hand uh, throughout and in the same sort of style. So it's not like there were two things that were written separately and then put together. It was like clearly something that was written to go together. Uh, the question of who was it for is a, that's a question. Uh, and it's sort of an interesting one because was it for the person who was making the confession, you would, you would think, but then why would they have the second half? Maybe it was sort of an expectation of that. Um, so what kind of person was this written for? Because I just said a person making confession. Well, uh, there are reasons to believe that it was written for a woman and specifically for a nun, specifically for an Augustinian nun. And we'll look at some of the arguments to be made, uh, but there's nobody's name is in it. Um, so there's still, even with all these sort of answers, there's still a lot of questions. So um, the way that the text within the sections is organized, I think is pretty interesting. Um, it's divided into sort of different, you think about you've got the seven deadly sins and you've got the 10 commandments and you've got all these other things and they're all in here. So we start with, um, it says Confessione Generale. Um, so this is sort of the general introduction. Um, this is in Latin. At the, at the start, um, but it switches between Latin and uh, Italian. So it's sort, of, it's sort of both. And this is another reason this is quite interesting because it is, a lot of it is in the vernacular. Um, so the expectation I think is that the person reading it would be an Italian uh, speaker. 
Um, so we so we start with this sort of um, introduction here. Uh, you know, here is here is the way that you do your confession um, when you when you do the confession. Um, we turn the page. And you'll see here that there is a rubric. You, it's got these, it's, I really like it. It's very clean and sort of uh, clear, sort of humanistic script. Um, it's got these blue initials, blue and red are the only colors that you see. And unlike a lot of manuscripts we look at where you have initials that go back and forth between blue and red, in this case, the, the large initials are always gonna be blue and the rubric um, which are quite faded by now, are always in red. Um, so this is sort of the end of our introduction. And what we have here is our first section, which is on the Ten Commandments. So here it's like, if you have sinned against something in the Ten Commandments, here is what you, here is what you say. Um, and here is also where we start getting some clues as to who the person is um, that, uh, that this is written for. Actually, I'm going to switch back because I forgot. Um, on the first page, um, we have our first mention of Augustine. Where did he go? Um, oh, I remember. I was just looking at this earlier. Uh, it's that, in oh, the paragraph with the C. Yep. Confitior Deo omnipotenti, Beate Marie, Beato Augustino. So here we're, we're talking about um, the, the um, blessed Mary and blessed Augustine and then all the other saints. So the fact that Augustine is mentioned specifically could mean that, um, that it's specifically an Augustinian uh, nun. But here we say, okay, we're, we're starting with the, with the 10 commandments. And so here is the first commandment. Um, concerning the first commandment, here's the commandment. And if you go against it, I don't have a lot of this translated, but I have a little bit. So the, um, the second commandment is up here. And we can see here in the margins, um, oh, you can't see that because it's a little bit far over. But here we go. The, they're actually numbered in, um, in the right margin. So here is secundo here, and then we have the third, and then it actually goes back to, there's the second and then the third and then the second again. Um, why exactly? Oh, and the fourth, but we go back to the second. And this is where we have our first indication that maybe this is for a nun because there is the mention of the sisters. Let me find that. Um, Io non sono bella. Oh no, this is the woman because it's the bella. I am not as beautiful as the others. Where did Bella go? Bella. Here we go. Io non sono bella. I am not as beautiful as the others. And this is against the second commandment. Um, Thou shall not make wrongful use of the name of God, which is the second commandment. I'm not entirely sure how this fits with that, but um, but there but there it is. Um, the fifth commandment is a little more interesting. So we're moving through. We have the third commandment. We have the fourth commandment. Over here we have the fifth commandment, which in the Catholic Church is, "Thou shalt not kill or commit murder." Um, but what it what it says here is not yep non ferro homicidio in quero uh, in questo erato erato auto in podio. So what this says is um, here I have sinned for I have felt hatred towards my sisters. Uh, that is. Mie sorella. Mie sorella is my sisters. I have felt hatred for my sisters or others, and I have wished their death. So you're not, she's not actually admitting that she has murdered someone, but she's thought about it, which is as bad. And so she needs to say that um, 
that she is sorry. But here that reference to the sisters could easily be understood as a not as sisters in by blood, but sisters in Christ. So they're the um, being in a group of nuns. Um, and likewise, um, the sixth commandment, which is thou shalt not commit adultery um, or fornication. So we have fornicare there. Um, in questo o rato, uh, here I have sinned a number of times. I have sinned in my dreams and in these wanderings, I have taken pleasure by myself or with others. So again, it's a sort of a very, we can see that at this time, it's not only have you actually done the thing, it's have you thought about it. And this is also considered, uh, this is all considered a sin. So it goes, and it's interesting um, because they are quite personal. Uh, and so one of the um, things that it might be that this was written for a specific person, because this is definitely, you know, maybe they had input into it or not. It could have been an imaginative priest. I don't know. It's sort of interesting to think about. I will say it doesn't appear that this particular text has been um, has been edited or translated. At least there's nothing that I saw in the record. Um, so I feel like there's there's probably work to be done uh, in this. So if you're interested in this um, topic, I would uh, suggest that you take a look. Um, let's see. So we're still in the commandments. Then we go to the to the eighth commandment, which is going to be over on this side of the page, uh, which is thou shall not engage in false uh, testimony. Here we have another mention of sisters. Um, ninth, so I think that is here. Uh, e questo opacato, altura, sacramente, uh, a mio superiore, to my sister, to my superior. Um, della me sorella. Um, so this is, I have sinned uh, against, um, I have sinned a number of times. I have, oh no, no, that's that one. Um, I have falsely accused my superior, some of my sisters to my superior. So this is false, false accusations here um, in the false testimony. Interestingly enough, uh, here is the uh, ninth commandment which in the Catholic church is uh, thou shalt not covet your neighbor's wife. And there's actually nothing there. It just says here is, here's the ninth commandment, shall not covet your neighbor's wife. We figure that's not an issue for you. So, so that's fine. And then, uh, and then the other ones uh, continue. So then we have all 10 commandments. Um, the next section is uh, the seven deadly sins. So considering the seven deadly sins. So now we've gone through the 10 commandments and now we have to do the seven deadly sins. There's some overlap, um, but not entirely. So we start with pride or superbia. Can you, I've got multiple things open. I think. Oh, no, here we go. So here we have superbia or pride. Um, and here again, I boasted saying that I was the most beautiful, uh, wise and cunning more than the others. Um, and this I think is another example of um, the, the feminine endings. Um, so that's what we're looking at is the feminine endings of these words, um, implying that it's written for a woman or by, potentially by a woman, but at least for a woman. Um, and then the sin of pride, uh, del secundo. I thought that was on this page as well. Um, oh no, it is. There's another one that's mentioning uh, the sisters. Um, there's another mention of sisters in here um, somewhere. So I was con being contemptuous of my sisters. And then we move on. So here's the first. And then the second, uh, seven deadly sin. And the third. And the fourth, we have anger somewhere. I didn't write the numbers down. And I don't know off the top of my head which 
which numbers they are. Um, and then the sin of lust, uh, which interestingly enough, five verso, the sin of lust talks about, I am guilty of the, yeah, here, luxuria. And here she talks about, um, I am guilty of the seventh deadly sin that is lust to which I have succumbed through my discourse or conversation. So she's talked about it, my memories and gestures, as well as revealing indiscreetly parts of my body. Um, so again, there's a little bit of overlap with the, um, the first section, which focused on the, um, on the 10 commandments but it's a little bit it's a little bit different here which is sort of which is sort of interesting um and so then so that so now okay we're done with the seven deadly sins um and then now here we are with um the five senses so now we move on to the five senses so how have you sinned regarding your five senses um and specifically with touch uh, so we have secundo, quinto. Um, the fifth sense is touch. Um, I have guilty of touching and I have touched indiscreetly um, on my body and those of another. So we've moved on from thinking about it to now we're actually touching, which is kind of an interesting, uh, interesting progression through, through this um, confessional. So we're through the senses, and now we hit the 12 articles of faith, um, which is a mirror of the Apostles' Creed. So this is the things that you believe. So I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, uh, et cetera. And at this point, it's basically, um, unlike these other portions where it's sort of saying, here is how I have transgressed these, um, starting at this section, it's basically just laying these things out. Um, so I don't, I don't know a whole lot about how confession worked, um, but it, it feels like at this point you're saying, okay, here, here is my statement of belief. Here are the things I believe, and it, and again, it's sort of one, two, three, four, um, stating uh, through, um, and then ending with um, in the life, you know, the everlasting life. Amen. So we're through the um, 12 articles of faith. And then next, I believe, is the seven corporal works of mercy. Um, I had to look all of these up because <laughs> I didn't know these. There's a lot to cover, clearly, a lot of ways where you can go wrong. Um, this is uh, to feed the hungry. Um, to uh, give drink to the thirsty, to close the naked. These are ways on corporal on earth, ways that you can help people. Um, and again, it's just sort of laying them out in a list. Um, and you can see here to sort of help to sort of help them along in addition to the numbers written out on the on the right as they have been, um, they're also numbered um, numbered here on the left. So we have those seven, uh, seven corporal works of mercy. And then you have the seven spiritual works of mercy. Um, and these are, as opposed to helping the people bodily, it's helping other people spiritually. So instructing the ignorant, uh, counseling the doubtful, um, et cetera. To bear patiently those who wrong us. It's a good one. To forgive offenses. All right, and then we move on to over here, uh, three theological verse, virtues, uh, faith, hope, and uh, charity. And there's a little, I didn't read through these, but there's a little bit more uh, written out uh, for each of these, maybe instructions for how you can best uh, follow each of those. And then we have the four, cardinal virtues 
uh, prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. So these are the four, one, two, three, four down here. And then the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, which are wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of God. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then um, virtue against mortal sin and virtue, no, this is virtual against mortal sin. I didn't see what that, what that was. And then we sort of reach the end. So here's the last bit of the um, of this part of the confessional with more instruction. And I, I realize that I spent a lot of time on that one, but I think that is more interesting than this than the second half, which is actually the larger half, which is the the instruction for the confessor for the priest. Um, I think the first part uh, is really interesting because it does show the sort of point of view of the person doing the confessing. Um, and then the second half mirrors the first half. Um, I didn't point out, but you, you probably noticed at the front and then here as well, that there are spaces left for um, what would have been a capital Q uh, for Quando. Uh, and in both cases, they uh, are not there. And also uh, you may have noticed that there's not there's there's not anything written in the margins. And so it could be that this was not actually a book that was used very much. It's not very, not very dirty. Although, I mean, it, I think it has been used a little bit, but how exactly it was used is, is hard to tell from looking at the physical book, unlike other books um, that we have where you can see that. So, so this is the Manual of Confessors. So, I think that as far as the genre goes, there are a lot more um, confessor manuals that survive from the sort of priest's point of view. This is a pretty popular genre. Um, they circulated widely through Europe, sort of starting in the 13th century through the late 15th century. So this is actually towards the end of the time when this genre was really popular. A lot of them in Latin, but also in the vernacular um, and often um, anonymously. Uh, composed like this one is anonymous. I don't think we know. We don't know who wrote it. Um, so, like the first part, it starts out with the sort of uh, introduction. You are the confessor. Here is how you um, examine the sinner. Here's how you admonish uh, the sinner. Here, and so we start in um, on twelve verso. Um, we have the 12th, the, um, sorry, the 10 commandments, right? So we're starting off in the same way. The 10 commandments, uh, here is how you do that. It's a little bit longer um, because I think we're, you know, it's like, okay, if they say this, you have to do, you know, say however many Hail Marys and, and, um, and say the prayers. And then we get to... So we've got through the Ten Commandments, and now we're on to the seven deadly sins the same way. So um, if you had these two in separate, if you had them in separate books, you could imagine the priest sitting with the confessor, um, sort of going through it together. The way it is bound together is sort of interesting because you can't really do that unless you were switching back and forth. And I don't know how, how um, realistic that is. Uh, but so we're still on those seven deadly sins. And then 18 verso, we get to the five senses. Um, and then the seven, tor um, pardon me, uh, corporal works of mercy, although, um, yeah. Although I think in here it's written temporal, at, at least it was, it was transcribed that way in something I was looking at, which seemed very strange. Um, 
and then we have the four cardinal and three uh, theological virtues, which were separately in the first part, but now they're sort of put together in the second part. Um, and then um, the and then at the ending, it sort of lacks all of the all of the sections um, where it's in the first part where it sort of lists out um, the um, the things. I think that that is sort of lacking in the second in the second section. But as I say, there's not as much. I'm going by what was in the record and what was in the um, the catalogers folder, which had sort of a longer description. And I think there's a lot in the second section that is maybe not mentioned there. I'd love to have an addition or a, a translation of this. I think it would be really, it would be really interesting um, to have. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's, that's the, that's the little confessor, general confessor. It's not a huge amount to look at, but it's such a neat, it's such a neat text. Um, are there any questions or anything? I'll just sort of, because we still have a couple of minutes, I'll, I'll just sort of turn, turn the pages to have a look. And it's so pretty. Um, the, I love the parchment too, because as you see, this is, this is the hair side of the parchment. It's got a lot of, of um, hair follicles there. So as I've been turning the pages, you, you may have noticed that. The hair and the flesh is really, um, you can tell the difference really easily between those. Um, I will put in the links one more time. And I also, I see that somebody put in a, the two, the two sections are definitely the same hand. I. They look like the same hands to me. They look absolutely the same. I'm gonna turn, Amy's nodding her head. <laughs> yeah, I, so I will say that they are, they are on separate choirs. So it's a three choir, um, it's three choirs of 10, the choirs being the booklets that are sewn together to make the book. Um, and here we are, this is the end of the first section and that's in one choir. So that's 10, uh, 10 folios. And then the second section is the second two, uh, two choirs, which is 20 folios. Um, but I see, oh, you can't see that. There are choir signatures at the bottom and they all have, so this is B and let's see, I didn't notice it's A actually. Yeah. So there's choir signatures for A and then B. And this is something that would be done I guess are they were these would have these have been added later, Amy, or are these would these have been made at the time? They're most often, I mean, I guess you could have them at the oh, time I of can't. a rebinding, but they're really for you can't hear me. Um can anyone? Okay. Yeah. I, Thanks. I couldn't hear you. I don't know why I could hear you. Um, <coughs> but yeah, they would have been original. Yeah. So these were definitely, they're definitely made to go together, which is what I thought. Um, so. Can you hear me now? No. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, is. It is interesting. And I think it's a little, I, my experience with these is that usually you see the, um, Oh, that's, we. Uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's my, I switched my phone, my phone and my mm -hmm. computer earlier. So it's probably just my, my, my bad. Um, uh, one I thing think else. this, well, I'll let Amy, <laughs> I can't hear you, but he's asking if there are, um, if this book is unique or there are other copies, there's nothing in this uh, about there being other copies in the record. Yeah. All right, so it is, I'm sorry if Amy's still talking, but it is, uh, okay, it is uh, past, so we're going to say goodbye, but thank you all so much for joining today uh, for this. I think it's a neat, a neat little book, and I uh, hope we'll see you again sometime soon. Bye.